Jack in Southwest Florida, the rains have finally stopped and the floodwaters are beginning to recede. Um, and the resulting pictures and images of the devastation from Hurricane Ian are truly a heart wrenching. Uh, the Washington Post got obtained some drone video, we're gonna show it to you now. And the drone video was taken a few hours ago above Port Charlotte, Florida. Um, Port Charlotte is just north of Fort Myers. It's near where the eye of Hurricane Ian roared ashore. Port Charlotte had a population of 50,000 people. Thousands of homes though have been destroyed, thousands of others. Will likely be unlivable following flood water several feet high. Here is the headline from the Miami Herald, Ian's path of ruin, Sanibel Bridge severed, Gulf Coast cities flooded, rescues continue. The Washington Post headline reads, historic damage as millions lose power, death toll remains unclear. As Florida Governor DeSantis describes flooding as one in one 500 year event. In the body of the story, the Post reports, quote, Ian battered parts of Florida's western coast, tearing down trees and power lines and causing dangerous storm surges in parts of the state. Authorities in Fort Myers, which was badly hit, said late Wednesday that parts of the city were under three to four feet of water. To the south of Naples, half of the streets are not passable due to high water, Collier County warned in a tweet. Utility companies say that more than 2.6 million people in Florida are now without electricity. And while state authorities have not yet released a death toll, some of the public officials are warning that the number of people killed in the storm is expected to be in the hundreds. The storm is moving north. And again, as the Washington Post reported, it is projected to bring potentially life-threatening floods, storm surge and winds to parts of Florida, Georgia, at North and South Carolina as it makes its way towards Northeastern Florida and then approaches the South Carolina coast on Friday. The governors of Virginia, Georgia, North Carolina and South Carolina have declared states of emergency ahead of Ian's expected shift in their direction. In Fort Myers, Florida and nearby areas, they, well, rescues are underway as we pointed out and several buildings, Jack, have apparently been cut off apparently including a local jail. According to Lee County Sheriff's Office spokesperson Anita Irart, the Sheriff's Office declined to evacuate inmates from its 457 bed downtown Fort Myers jail as Hurricane Ian neared category five status and closed in on the area. Lee County's own map indicates that the jail is in a mandatory evacuation zone. In advance of the storm's arrival, the national hurricane forecast suggested that downtown Fort Myers would face the threat of a storm surge of nine feet or more. In an update though, the Lee County Sheriff's has released a statement claiming that the inmates at this particular downtown jail are safe. Quote, in abundance of caution, inmates were relocated within the main jail to a higher floor. Hurricane Ian hit Florida, of course, after hitting the Caribbean, parts of Puerto Rico and Cuba. And coverage of the storm on Fox News has revealed a stunning Incredible amount of ignorance that one of their main news anchors has about the Caribbean. Martha McCallum was talking about the impact of Hurricane Ian on some of the islands in the Caribbean. You will not see her face here, but listen to what she said as she's covered by video. You feel terrible for people in Puerto Rico who were just hit and Cuba who were just hit. Thank God we have better infrastructure in our country. We've put a lot of investment into making sure that we're ready for these things, but it's an act of nature. And that of course is an act of stupidity. Our country, well, Puerto Rico has been part of our country as a US territory for more than 130 years. Cenk, your thoughts? Yeah, so uh, first on the uh, McCollum and Sheriff stories. So first, uh, a lot of Americans don't know that Puerto Rico is part of America and that's because our government treats them that way. And so when Florida gets hit, everyone's like, "Oh my God, Florida! What's going on? Oh my, my heart goes out." Puerto Rico gets hit; it's an afterthought. And by the way, now that Florida got hit, nobody's even talking or thinking about Puerto Rico. And the infrastructure in Florida is better. That's because we don't spend money in Puerto Rico, even though it's a U.S. territory, because of people like Martha McCollum. The uh, sheriff saying that uh, the, uh, out of an abundance of caution, we've moved folks to the second floor. That's not really an abundance of caution. An abundance of caution would have been moving them out uh, for sure, and you're supposed to have a plan to do that under normal circumstances. What if it was a fire? Oh, out of an abundance of caution, we moved them to the second floor where the fire also raged. Okay, so, uh, but the main story here, of course, is about uh, the hurricane overall. As uh, David just uh, told you, 500 year storm, DeSantis says. Unless 500 years just turned into four years, I think his math is questionable. Uh, there was a, a hurricane just as strong that hit Florida in 2018. And then there was the 500 or the 1000 year storm that hit Houston a couple of years back. 
Uh, I think that the war on masks for Republicans have begun. And of course, the whole point there is they're trying to pretend that this is just extraordinary and is not happening on a regular basis when of course it is. So it, it's super important to be clear here, especially with uh, some Republicans in the audience uh, because they're easily duped. So hurricanes uh, that happen like this one are a weather event, okay? Climate is uh, overall. Right, or the the patterns that we see, that the, the cooling and the heating of the air, the oceans, etc. Right, so you can't attribute any one weather event specifically necessarily to climate uh, and the changes in the climate. But if you see the severity of the storms picking up, the severity of the droughts, the fires, etc., as scientists have correctly predicted now for decades, that is climate change. So it. If you see just one dot like this hurricane and you say, well, okay, Jake, that's not fair. That's just a weather event, which is what every Republican online is saying now. Oh, just weather, 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 right? But if you see a pattern of dots and that shows you a line like this going through the roof, that is what scientists predicted. That is the climate change that they're talking about. Because if the climate change doesn't create storms or hurricanes, it intensifies them, right? So uh, I think that that's part of what we're seeing here. And then, David, to the political hypocrisy, uh, DeSantis, yeah. of course, uh, will say, "Oh my God, uh, I can't believe this. We've got to recover here, et cetera, et cetera." And then he'll turn around and take fossil fuel money the next day, uh, and and say that climate change doesn't exist. But on, but an even more stark hypocrisy is as he is praising gigantic government handouts to Florida today. He'll turn around tomorrow and say, "I can't believe the government does." Handouts. Jenk, is there also a political implication though, just in terms of how the storm is handled, say over the next couple of weeks? And and I hearken back to you and I both remember Hurricane Katrina from 2005 and the political damage. I mean, at first everybody was like, yes, rally around trying to rebuild and help everybody in New Orleans. But within a couple of days, uh, when there was George W. Bush flying over and saying, heck of a job, Brownie. I mean, there was a clear political impact as a, as a major US city essentially drowned. If in fact the damage is catastrophic in the western part of Florida, and there are hundreds of deaths, and aid doesn't get immediately in there, and electricity doesn't get turned on for a while, does that have a drag on, on DeSantis? And could it possibly, I suppose, maybe even um, put a drag on some Democrats and change a little bit of the focus for the 2022 midterms and possibly hurt Joe Biden? Yeah, no, I don't think so, and so I'll tell you why. I think that uh, we live in a post-truth world now. Hurricane was um, still in the truth world, and so all the media agreed that Hurricane Katrina was handled poorly. So the whole country agreed that Hurricane Katrina was handled poorly, because it was. Uh, now, if a hurricane is handled poorly, uh, well, we saw it in Texas. You know, when they had the the lines freeze in the in the winter and people froze to death. The Republicans just said, "Oh, that's because of solar energy. Solar energy isn't being used there. They privatized the energy the, the energy industry there, and the that private company cut costs and let people freeze to death and just made the government pay the the costs." But Fox News and everybody else went out there and said, "No, it's not the facts that you see." It's these other lies we're gonna tell you about how solar did it and wind did it, just totally made up. And 40% of the country instantly believed them. So since we live in that post-truth world now, no, all Tucker Carlson and the other guys have to do is come out and say hurricanes are good. You know what, a goddamn Dr. Fauci created the hurricane and he could have fixed this hurricane <laughs> with ivermectin, but the liberals didn't take the ivermectin. And so so no, it'll, nothing has any political impact at all anymore other than yes, the critical Small slice of independence left in the country, and that's that's our battlefield. Yeah, and I I think I'm I'm with you, and it's a sort of a sad state of affairs because you'd like to think that our political leaders, particularly in times of an emergency, if they handle it well, they should be rewarded. If they handle it poorly, they should be held accountable for that. But um, we'll see how things play out over the next couple of weeks. Actually, David, one more Let's thing. Move on. on. Sorry, David. One yeah. more thing on that. I mean, you see DeSantis actually trying hard. To handle this correctly, right? So he's telling, hey, 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 don't criticize Biden. Let's get the money in. And he he seems like he's very active. I'm being fair. You see that? Like I thought Abbott did a miserable job in Texas, but DeSantis looks like he's at least trying hard, right? I'm kind of surprised by it because remember he didn't mind killing his own citizens at all 
during coronavirus. He bragged about it. Oh, we're not gonna take precautions. Florida's gonna be the dumbest state. Ha <laughs> ha. And then you saw numbers spike. And way more people died because he refused to protect his own citizens. I guess the hurricane is visible and a virus is not visible. So maybe that makes a difference. But there's some percentage chance, David, at some point Republican governors just go, it doesn't matter how visible it is. Like a post-truth world. We'll just blame it on Bill Gates. And and by the way, Alex Jones is already there. You know, he says the government creates weather and it creates these storms, etc. When Alex Jones is there, Tucker Carlson's next, and DeSantis is right after. So this might be the last hurricane that they even bother responding to. The rest they'll just say it didn't exist, or Fauci created it, or you could solve it with uh, you know, uh, sun tanning your crotch. Uh, that's a literal remedy they have. Tucker Carlson in a famous Fox News documentary. 